like the so-called Freemasons and, you know, um, Masons, who's a Mason, a Freemason. But most of the people can't even spell my son. You know, they don't know what the free means in Freemason. And this getting back to, like, one of the basics, one of the preliminaries. Like, I was trying to explain to the eye about the God, you know, the whole God and God spell. You understand? They don't even know how to spell God in that sense. You know, what they say, G-O-D, you know, and this is kind of one of the old, let me just put up here, it's one of the old kind of uh, in Coquilish. It's one of the old kind of paradigms and parallels, like the whole G-O-D. So you say, the God spell. Go spell God. No, go spell God. You know, people say, well, the gospel. Well, if you go to the Greek, you know, and, and this is where it's all Greek to most of the niggas. They don't go to the Greek. The Greek, it comes from uengel, uengel, like the Ethiopic wengel. And wengel means the good news, the good news. But good news in what sense? So you could just understand that the good news is basically the good news in the Hebraic or the Ethiopic sense. It's not the good news in, you know, the so-called Western Gentile Christian sense. That's the go spell. So let's go spell. Go spell, right? But then when we equals go, some say it's the God, right? The God spell. It's the spell of God. What's the spell of God? See, the spell of most that don't understand what God is, is and what the G-O-D means in all of its root foundational meaning are under the spell. So they're under kind of an illusion and delusion of what the ghost spell, the gospel. For example, ask a whole bunch of Christians. You know, I say a whole bunch. Just go out and ask different, you know, Christians that belong to different denominations. What does gospel mean? They say, well, the gospel is um, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, what about Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? And how many of them are going to tell you that he's black? You see what I'm saying? Because they're under the God spell. Now, the God spell is a Masonic thing. G equals Gomer, right? O equals Oz. Not that guy, um, Mohammed. You understand? That, that guy, Mohammed, Mohammed, you know, Oz, the Oprah guy. And now D equals the bar. Now, for some, this is old, you know, this, this is old teaching. You know, it, it, like, like some already understand this. You know, they're, they're familiar. Goma means what? Goma means strength, right? Strength, right? And Oz, like strength, strength, wisdom, and beauty. Strength, wisdom. Remember the wisdom of it was the Wizard of who? The Wizard of Oz. The O-Z. Wizard of Oz. Strength, wisdom, and beauty. Now, these are the attributes, right, that God, from a Masonic, you know what I'm saying? Really, this is, this is more Freemasonic. You know what I'm saying? Freemasonic with a, you could say, with a spin, with a spin to it. This is Freemasonic with a spin. So we have G-O-D. So you had niggas saying, yeah, I'm a G. You're a G because you're expressing Gomer. But then how much wisdom, you know saying? how much wisdom are you expressing? Where's the wisdom? Notice nothing here is concerning knowledge. But now in the Hebrew, Gomer is very interesting. Gomer, if you look up Gomer for a moment, and if you go to the Hebraic root, let's look up Gomer. All right? Gomer, 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 Gomer. So if you go look up um, Gomer, what's that metaphysical, what's that metaphysical B-I-B-L-E um, dictionary, the metaphysical Bible dictionary? Can look up Gomer for a moment. Um, Gomer, there's a line, the gold spell. Go spell. Go spell, gospel. Go spell, gospel. So 
the first word right here, we'll get into a little bit deeper. This is just like a quick a quick lesson right here, a quick lesson. So look up Gomer. Gomer. Now, there's a very long definition for Gomer. You understand? A very, 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 very. You understand? Well, actually, that was Goliath. It's on the same page right here, 241. Gomer means, it says, organic accumulation. Gomer is an organic accumulation. Organic. It's talking a lot about organic today, like organic, microbiotic. They say organic foods and stuff like that. Organic. Well, see, organic is all based on carbon. Now, when you look at carbon, carbon is that black substance, the, the, the root. We could say the root, if you want to get into the so-called blackness and where, where it became condensed to the material level, that's where you have carbon. All living things contain carbon in it. This is why they do the whole carbon DNA and dating and so forth and so on. You know, but it's organic accumulation, organized, organized aggregation. That means like if we all come together, but we're organized. This is the organized aggregation. See how it links with strength? It means full, full and complete. So a gomer means full and complete. This is why they use the G in the masonry, that G, that cipher, even though here the G is not complete because it's actually coming from another G. But we'll touch on that momentarily. So we have finished, perfected, and ended. Ended. Now, Gomer was the son of Japheth. So here we have a so-called pseudo or pre-Euro um, lineage. Grandson of Noah, Genesis 10 and 2. Now in Ezekiel, 38 and 6, we find there's a prophecy. So the prophet I see, what, what's the prophecy now we find in Ezekiel 38 and 6? It says, there's a prophecy against Gomer. There's a prophecy against Gomer and all his hordes. So remember, this God's spell is not the same as the when gale, which is the good news, biblically speaking. Now we are lost in this translation of loss in a Gentile, Western, white concept. But in order to come out of it, we have to understand where we're at. So that's all we're dealing with, the God spell, so-called God spell, the God spell. And you see, when we say acts, ones, and ones, about what does the God spell mean, God spell mean to them. They're going to say about Jesus Christ, so forth and so on, right? But they're not going to tell you that he's black. Now, some people say, well, that doesn't really matter. Okay, then tell us the truth that he's blue. Tell us about the blue Jesus. Some people are, blue Jesus? If you don't understand that blue means heaven, you know, semi Yahweh, and that's why they say that a nigga is so dark that they call him blue black. It, it, see, it's not just racial, but this is origin, the Lord of heaven. You see, the Lord of heaven is the blue Jesus or the blue Joshua, which we know down here in the mundane, as our woolly here Lord and Savior, Joshua HaMoshiach, or the true Christ, in the image of the Ethiopian, which means the image of the black man. So we just identify who he is so that you can get out of worshiping the beast or the image of the beast, the blonde hair, blue eyed, and get out of worshiping the so-called golden calf of end-time prophecy. Now, evidently, this Gomer... This Gomer, Ezekiel 38 and 6, was hostile, was a nation, a nation that was hostile to Israel. So if you understand who Israel is, you understand that this is why this is, this is pseudo-Masonic. Now, of course, this was picked up by the nation of gods and earths, and it was picked up by other, other denominations of the breakaway from the nation of Islam and the knowledge and, and you know, the, the gods and the earths and so forth and so on, right? And um, that's two gomers. The third gomer is the adulterous wife of Hosea. Hosea, which etymologically links to Hoshua, as in Jah or Yahoshua. So the name means salvation. So salvation symbolically in the name of the prophet Hosea, had an adulterous wife whose name was Gomer. Gomer, right? 
Now, the prophet Gomer, Hosea 1 and 3, she was the daughter of Diblaim. Now, metaphysically, let's understand this metaphysically, and we're going to continue with Oz. We're going to deal with the, the wisdom or the wizard of Oz, and then the bar. The bar is probably the most interesting one because Hebraically speaking, the bar means the word. The bar means the word. So, so as we go through this, you're going to see how it really, you know what I'm saying, how it really leads forward to the word, but they put the D last. Overstand. Now, if you flip this around in dyslexia, you have dog, D-O-G. Now, this might surprise folks. Really, if you looked at it as D-O-G, is much higher than looking at it as G-O-D, if you really get it. You understand? But be that as it may. Japheth, the son of Noah, pertains to the intellect. So this is speaking of Gomer. So Gomer pertains to the reasoning faculty. All metaphysical Bible dictionary here. In man, so the, so the reasoning faculty, come, make I and I reason together. Yes, I, I and I reasoning, right? So that's the reasoning is the intellect. Man cannot by intellectual reasoning understand or come in conscious touch with God, with the true God. So they're telling you right here that man, just by his intellect, you see this is where a lot of folks falling off. They think that they can come into contact or touch, you know, saying conscious, conscious touch with the true God who is spirit through the reasoning, you know, saying, or intellectual understanding. Human reason is in its greatest perfection and completeness and completion, Gomer, you know, saying, Gomer, the G in God as in God spell, right? We would learn how to spell God, how to break down this God spell, a West, Western Gentile white so-called culture, so our people, our people can come out, because there's a lot of people who are part of this confusion. They're, 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 they're you could call the spiritual, the spiritual Babylonians, but human, human reason in its greatest perfection and completion, Gomer, it fails to reach spiritual wisdom and truth. Wow. So human, let's get this again, human reason in its greatest perfection. So the greatest perfection of human what? Reason. Greatest perfection and completion fails to reach spiritual wisdom and truth. There is no real building. Hmm. Huh. Preserving quality in it. It is always destructive in the end. So human reason is an enemy to pure spiritual understanding. It is adulterous in that it looks to the outer and depends upon man-devised resources even while proclaiming it's perfect trust in God. So is this giving you an opportunity of understanding and overstanding the God spell? See, they're not going to tell you about this book in, in your churches. But this book actually explains every key and central word in your Bible in an operative way. You understand? In, in, in a practical or operative way. So you get to see the real wisdom, you understand, of the spirit of the king of kings and his Christ. And you can intuit that and come to that spiritual understanding without understanding the words. Then the stories that you read, all the Bible stories are very important. There's a lot of wisdom in all those stories in the Bible. But because you don't understand who's who, you, you don't have an understanding, you fall under the God, or we can call it the ghoul spell. Brothers and sisters, some more to come on this. Learn how to spell God and learn what the God spell really is about. You understand? God in dyslexia. Because you, my lost brothers and sisters, are God or children of God in dyslexia. Dyslexia means against the law. So come out of Babylon before it's too late. Shalom Rastafari.